Good morning and welcome. Following from last week, I should probably begin by saying Happy New Year, because of course today is Advent Sunday and it's the start of the church's year. So it feels like a whole new beginning and yet the world around us feels less like beginnings and more like endings as the days get shorter and the leaves begin to fall. But today is the start of a season of anticipation as we look forward to the coming of Jesus, both as the child at Bethlehem, but also as the one who will come again as King to reign over all creation. So let's go and join the service. Advent hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Please stand, those that would like to.
grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And so we enter Advent, the season of waiting and preparing and anticipation. We sit as we pray. Almighty God, you bring to light things hidden in darkness and know the shadows of our hearts. Cleanse and renew us by your spirit that we may walk in the light and glorify your name. Through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect for, An for Advent Sunday, please join in. Almighty God, as your kingdom dawns, turn us from the darkness of sin to the light of holiness, that we may be ready to meet you in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Sybil's going to read our first reading. <clears throat> Jeremiah 33, verses 14 to 16. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the good promise I made to the people of Israel and Judah. In those days and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the day by which it will be called the Lord, our righteous saviour. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. And Kerry is going to read our Gospel. The Gospel reading is taken from Luke, chapter 21, verses 25 to 36. There will be signs in the sun, moon and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and the tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up, lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. He told them this parable. Look at a fig tree and all the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things, you know the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness and the anxieties of life.
and that day will close on you suddenly like a trap. For it will come on all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. I can't believe it's Advent. Autumn has felt kind of elongated this year, very mild, very dry here until just the last two or three days when it's turned cold. Actually, it's turned very cold, hasn't it? It was minus two at nine o'clock this morning when I was coming here. But here we are on the verge of winter and the start of another year in the rhythm of the church's life. And we begin with Advent, all about the coming of the King and the coming of God's kingdom in the person of Jesus. But you know, I had a thought this week that maybe Advent comes at the wrong time of the year, which may sound a bit strange because of course Advent and Christmas go together. And maybe that's what I was thinking, the reality that Advent and Christmas go together, quite literally. I wonder how many of you remember your families not getting the Christmas tree until about Christmas Eve? How many of you? Yeah, lots of hands going up. And those of you that get them these days, when do you get them? July. <laughs> Certainly there are, tree, there are a number of trees up already, aren't there? You, if, you, if you come out at night, you will see them in people's front rooms. I wonder how many of you are looking, hopefully, to go to some kind of a Christmas do between now and Christmas. Yeah, again, hands going up. I don't know about you, but I've already received two Christmas cards and been wished a happy Christmas. And here at St Hughes, we've, we've put our poinsettias around the church this week so that all the different community groups that come in, especially the once a monthers, can enjoy them too when they have their Christmas dues. All our thoughts somehow get channeled into Christmas. And Christmas activities long before Christmas actually arrives. But what happens to Advent? That season of waiting and preparing and anticipating. How in the midst of all the Christmas activities and all the outward decorations, can we still keep hold of Advent? Well, we'll try to do so in our services, through our Advent hymns and readings, and through our candles, which we will light each week. And those candles, we will remember the call of Abraham and his family. As God begins to rescue a world in ruins and a human race that's in chaos. Through the candles, we'll follow the story of Israel's hope, a hope that kept going despite circumstances, despite events, a hope that was kindled through the prophets. Through our candles, we'll remember John the Baptist preparing the way for Jesus. And on the fourth Sunday, we will remember in wonder Mary accepting the call to carry the infant Jesus to birth. Israel's hope. A hope that those early Christians believed had taken on flesh, become human as one of us in Jesus. And Jesus, who through his life, death and resurrection began to bring in God's kingdom. That process of bringing heaven and earth together, which will finally, finally be completed when he comes again. 
which is where we come to in our gospel reading. In this coming year, we see the person of Jesus through the eyes of Luke. And it's not an easy passage that we begin with. And we certainly don't start at the beginning of the gospel, chapter one, which of course we will be hearing later in December surround the event surrounding the birth of Jesus. Instead, we start with the passage that calls us to be awake and alert to what is to come, to who is to come. And it can all sound quite alarming with signs in the, sun, in the sun, moon and stars, nations in anguish, the tossing, the roaring of the sea. It's a picture language. And it's a language of imagery that would have been probably far more understood in the times of Luke and of Jesus than now. But I imagine we could put our own version of that imagery in there. Maybe we could put visions of the climate emergency, of the extreme weather conditions that are going on. Images of a pandemic that is affecting the whole global community. And Jesus seems to be encouraging his followers not to be fearful, not to be overwhelmed or cowed by events, but to stand up, to lift up your heads. And for me, that's an image of be confident. Be confident in who you believe in. Because Jesus says your redemption, that's probably not a word we use very much these days, but the kingdom of God is near. The kingdom of God is near. God is near. When these things happen, you are not alone. And to try to help them to understand this, Jesus used a parable, a parable of the fig tree. The fig tree loses its leaves in the winter and then signs of new life come later, come later than the other trees around it. So when the leaves begin to appear, it's a sure sign that the warm season is very near. There isn't really very much time between those first signs of life and the full blown blossom. So Jesus says, keep a watchful eye for all the signs of life on the tree. Likewise, keep alert to what God is doing even when the wheels seem to be coming off. The kingdom of God is near. And as we approach the darkest time of year, certainly in our part of the world, Advent offers a gleam of light. It's not just the Christmas lights, which I love, but real hope light of real hope. Advent invites us to take in the whole sweep of God's history with us and join in with, notice what God is doing in our midst right now. And to look forward, to be ready for what is yet to come. And to come in time to celebrate Christmas Enjoy, because of the Christ who has come and in hope for the Christ who is to come again. Maybe, maybe I'll let Advent stay where it is. Let's pray. Lord, in this season, as we begin Advent, as we watch and wait and pray for the coming of your light into the world. We long for the day when the things of darkness will be no more. 
And as we watch and wait and pray, may we always be ready to encounter you, Lord, who are already and always with us. Amen. So we're going to join in the words of the, our faith. We're going to use the Apostles' Creed, the words which will appear. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So, today we're going to light the first of our Advent candles, and I'm going to invite Grandma and Grandchild, Genevieve and Hazel, if you would come, please. Hazel, I wonder if you'd take the light from the candles, and then Genevieve, would you just choose any of those four red candles to light? <laughs> Today we light a light to remember Abraham and Sarah, and all who followed them, in hope and trust in the promises of God. Thank you very much. And Christine is going to just lead singing in that chorus, The Light of Christ. Thank you, Christine. Twice, please. The light of Christ has come into the world. The light of Christ has come into the world. The light of Christ has come into the world. The light of Christ has come into the world. And so we pray together. Dear God, as we begin our Advent journey, grant us the courage to hope Hope for your presence, hope for your peace, hope for your promise, hope for our world. Amen. Thank you, thank you, Christine. Thank you, Genevieve and Hazel. So I wonder, Clive, could you bring forward the pebble pool, please? As we bring into God's presence these prayers that have been offered this week and this morning through these small pebbles. Thank you. Gracious God, we thank you for those who brought their concern and their love through these pebbles to you. We pray for all who are prayed for here, that you will hear, receive and answer their prayers. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Clive. 
And now Sue is going to lead us in our prayers. The response to dear Lord is we are seeking your light. Dear Lord, we are, we are seeking, seeking your light. In this season of waiting, of longing, of looking for you to come into our world, in our own lives, dear Lord, we are, we are seeking, seeking your light. In our families and amongst our neighbours, in our places of work, in our nurseries, schools, colleges and job centres. Dear Lord, we are, we are seeking, seeking your light. In St Hugh's, through the season of Advent and into Christmas, amongst all those who come through the doors, dear Lord, we are seeking your light. We thank you for the scientists and researchers working tirelessly on vaccines during this pandemic. In our nation, with case numbers so high and threats of new variants, dear Lord, we are, we are seeking, seeking your light. In our world, in Syria, Yemen, <clears throat> Afghanistan, Palestine, in all places where war and famine cause so much pain and hardship, for refugees, for those trapped in modern slavery, for countries where climate change is hitting hardest. Dear Lord, we are seeking your light. In the overstretched health services, care homes, hospices, and the lives of those who are unwell, especially those known to us. Dear Lord, we are seeking your light. In the homes of those who have lost loved ones this past year, and for those feeling keenly the loss of a loved one, dear Lord, we are seeking your light. Lord Jesus, you are the light shining in the darkness. May we have eyes to see and recognise you, and ears to hear your voice today. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sue. Jesus came and preached peace to those who were far off and those who were near. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So let's spread that peace through waves around the church and those joining us from home. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened wide his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. And now we give you thanks because you sent him to redeem us from sin and death and to make us inheritors of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may with joy 
behold his appearing and in confidence may stand before him. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. The end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join your eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. In times of hope, in times of trouble, in times of sorrow, in times of joy, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you. Eat in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. John, John the body of Christ, keep you. Eternal life.
And so we join in this prayer together. Eternal Father, we thank you for nourishing us with these heavenly gifts. May our communion strengthen us in faith, build us up in hope, and make us grow in love. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing. The God of hope fill you with all comfort, joy, and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. In the name of Christ. Amen. And so we sing our final hymn, Lo, he comes with clouds descending. Thank you.